Today we're in Melbourne and we're going to talk about paint decontamination and how to correctly prepare your car for ceramic coating. And we're at Dan's garage and this is Dan. And uh, Dan's going to take us for a bit of a tour through his shop before we get started. So I guess we'll start with the wash bay. Uh, okay, so I've been here now for about uh, 14 months. Uh, up until then I've been working in my garage at home. And this is the, uh, the combination I suppose of uh, working in a garage and if I had uh, uh, more space and more time and more money what would I build and, and uh, so this was uh, probably about uh, two and a half three years worth of planning and prep and, and um, uh, uh, you know building and making sure that everything was uh, the way that I wanted it so we'll start here with the, um, the wash bay and let me just add here that Dan takes paint decon decontamination so seriously that we're here on a Sunday he comes in every Sunday to prep for Monday's job. So I do, I do. It's, it's also too because I hate Mondays and I, I, don't, I don't like to, I don't like my Monday. <laughs> so basically, yeah, we're here on a Sunday afternoon. Um, the, the particular car that we've got here is a uh, client of mine who's, who's driven down from Brisbane. Um, so you'll notice the, uh, the Brisbane plates there. Um, so this bay here is the, uh, the, the wash bay. Um, it's a, uh, a raised floor um, that, uh, that drains into a centre channel there which goes into a, um, uh, an oil water separator and uh, you know, all the, the council and water companies are all, all very happy with the, uh, the, the product. Um, uh, but basically what this means is that I can control the environment. It means that I'm not washing outside, I'm not dealing with wind. Um, I can don't need to worry about hot panels. Correct. I can I can wash the car more on my terms, which at the end produces a better end result. Um, so uh, each car gets a, um, a, a, a two, two and a half hour decontamination, depending on the, um, the, the condition that the car arrives in. This one, having just uh, driven 1,800 odd miles, obviously we've got a little bit more to deal with in terms of bugs and, yep. and road grime and things like that. Um, but the owner actually takes pretty good care of it, so, so even he washed it before he, he got down here and he put some spray wax on, and so hopefully the process will be a, a little bit easier than, than, than your average vehicle who will travel the same distance. Yeah, um, but the, the process is, is important for you know, anyone who's looking to ceramic coat their car, which is about everyone these days. Um, the, the decontamination and the process that goes into prepping the car beforehand is, is crucial um, as far as getting the most out of your, out of your coating um, and the maximum durability possible. Any, anything that's left on the paint, um, it's just gonna inhibit bonding um, and you'll get premature failures and, and that's why um, Dan goes to, to so much effort for his clients to, to make sure that the paint is just absolutely perfect before it goes to the next stage. Well, it's, it's the first step in the process. So it, it's, it's the, in terms of the whole process, it's the least glamorous of, of you know, um, what, what detailing is, and it's the messiest and the wettest and all of that sort of stuff. But it is the one thing that uh, uh, sets the tone for the entire detail. So if you have a good base to work with, everything up, up on top of that then um, uh, contributes towards the end result. If you don't do this properly from the start, you're fighting all the way through. Yeah. So uh, the idea is do it once, do it properly, uh, and then everything else becomes a lot easier and the end result becomes you know, much more worthwhile. That's right. All right, let's have a look at the, the rest of the shop, mate. So this first room here. So here I've got, uh, this, is just, um, this is just my little car. This is, this is where, it, uh, where it lives. Um, it, uh, it goes out on sunny days, so um, uh, obviously it's not going to go out today. Um, but also too, it's a, it's a storage bay um, for cars that have been done that I want to um, get out of the way and keep in a, in a dust-free environment. Um, and so extra space for, for coating any additional cars. If that's correct. Need, yeah. That's correct. So I've got the LED panel light in here so that if I need to do some, uh, some coating work or anything like that, um, without disturbing what's in the, uh, the main detailing bay, I can do that and still uh, work out of the way without having to shuffle cars around. And this flat lighting, this is, this is really important for being able to see the coating go on correctly. That's correct, it's all diffused LED lighting. So, so there's two main types of lighting and, and we'll talk about some more in the detail later. The two main types of lighting are direct lighting uh, and diffused lighting. 
So the diffused lighting um, gives you more of a, a, a softer um, lighting, which is good for general lighting, but it's also much better for, for seeing uh, coatings uh, flash on the paintwork and being able to make sure that you are, are, um, are correctly buffing off the coating uh, and leveling it out, leveling out and, and not leaving high spots and things like that behind. So again, the overall end result is, is a lot better. And then the last bay down here. What we've done here is, uh, this is the specialist uh, detailing and paint correction bay. Um, so um, where the other bay has some general lighting, um, this has got both uh, general diffused lighting and direct lighting up the top there. Um, so the direct lighting is to be able to see paint defects and, um, and help correct them out. Um, again, the general lighting is uh, mainly used for coatings um, and um, uh, obviously, as we said, general lighting. So the walls here are grey to minimise reflection. When you're working with paint correction and, and, and polishing panels, the last thing you really want to be doing is having light bouncing around all over the place. You want to be able to focus it on a panel um, without having to worry about when you're sitting, um, you know, uh, reflected light coming back at you and, and, and diffusing what you're trying to see. So it's, is it, was it a three and a half ton scissor lift? Yep, it's a three and a half ton scissor lift, so it can take pretty much anything I want to throw at it, um, short of you know, short of a truck. Um, the uh, you'll see here that we've um, uh, built the floor up, um, so that we've uh, we've thought very carefully about the the gradients uh, that we're dealing with here, um, meaning that basically even even Lamborghinis can can come through here without having to lift the front. Um, and it just means to, you're not dealing with race ramps, you're not having to, to worry about uh, ground clearance when, you, when you're working with very, very low cars. So you can just, uh, we reverse the cars in um, and, uh, and park them over the spot and it just makes it very easy to, to, to lift up and, and pretty much zeroes out any chance of doing any damage. Um, so I've got the um, carpet tiles here as well. I thought about going for ceramic tiles like I had in my old garage. Um, the reason why I went with carpet tiles is that uh, they're easier to replace out if you damage them, but also too, uh, the carpet fibres tend to hold dust. Um, and everything that we do here um, in this environment is about controlling variables. So whether it's light, uh, temperature, dust, all of this sort of stuff is, is the more variables you can nail down, the better the end result you're going to get. And so by being able to have the carpet down here to, to, to trap the fibres, uh, sorry, to trap the dust, uh, it means that you're not kicking it up when you're walking around the car and you're, it's not landing on panels and you just vacuum it out at the end. So again, it's a, it's a, it's a cleaner process. All right, well, before we get started, there's one thing that Dan is almost as keen about as he is with detailing and I actually have him in my phone as Dan Caffeine. Uh, Dan is very serious about coffee and we're going to have a coffee first before we kick off some paint decontamination and uh, car prep. Done, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Now that we're caffeinated, Dan's going to take it away with the first step. Okay, so the first step is we've got the old uh, IK foamer here. Um, we're going to be using uh, Ferrex on the wheels. Um, what that does is that helps uh, start the initial process of a, a, a pre-soak of breaking down the brake dust and, and mud and things like that that are on the inside of the wheels. So we'll just... So again, fortunately, because we work in a controlled environment, we can afford to let this dwell a little bit longer than we normally would if we were outside. So on that topic, Dan, are you doing the wheels first so that you don't need to worry about painting dry? That's right. Panels? That's right. So basically, uh, I try and, um, as a general rule, um, I try and keep the paintwork as dry as possible just simply because if we were working out in the sun and the wind you don't want the water to be drying on the panels while you're trying to fiddle around doing the wheels so if you leave the car nice and dry focus on the wheels and then once the wheels are done then you can wet the rest of the car and go Perfect. for it. So this is one of the advantages of using foam. The, uh, the foam allows a bit longer dwell time 
than a standard liquid, so it, it basically is able to carry away a bit more uh, brake dust and dirt and nonsense. Right. Special wheel bucket, which has got uh, implements that we keep separate to our uh, implements that we're going to be using on the actual paint surface. The reason being is that the wheels are usually the dirtiest point of the car and the last thing you want to be doing is transferring any of that onto the actual paint work while you're washing the paint. Alright, so stage two, we're still on the wheels. So what we're doing now is we're doing a deeper clean. Now these wheels will actually, uh, as part of the detailing process, will actually pull off the car after we've moved into the detailing bay, but what we're going to do now is we're just going to give the barrels a quick clean and the wheel arches a quick clean and the faces a quick clean, um, just to um, make our job a little bit easier before we uh, pull the wheels off. So again, with the Ferrex, I found it works very, very well. This is a, again, it's a little cleaning agent. Once you've used wheel wheelies, it's hard to go back to any other wheel cleaning brush, isn't it? They're really, really good. There, there aren't that many detailing implements that I say to people um, to go out and buy and do not pass go and do not collect $200. The <laughs> wheel woolies are definitely one of those implements. The other thing that I do when I'm cleaning is that I, I, I wring out the brushes I'm going because rather than transferring it back into the bucket, it means that you're keeping the bucket water a little bit cleaner for a little bit longer. Fortunately with these wheels we're dealing with a relatively open face so they're not that hard to get in on. A lot of modern cars these days have uh, um, discs that are very close to the inside of the wheel barrels and can be a bit of a challenge. Um, but it certainly um, means that different size wheel woolies are absolutely useful. So we're just using a brush now just to agitate the areas can't quite get to with the wheel woolies. Again, because we're pulling the wheels off, it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect for this application. Ooh, yummy. So now we enter the next step of the process. So we've addressed the wheels, the wheels are clean. Uh, so now we're going to look at the bodywork. Um, as this is where a decontamination wash steps away a little bit from a standard maintenance wash. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Ferex again, uh, this time on the bodywork. So um, this car is not new, um, it's, it's about uh, six or so months old, but it's never had a decent detail. So we're, we're going to assume that there are going to be ferrous iron particles stuck to the surface as part of the travel from the factory to Australia. And uh, this is now what we're going to use to try and get rid of some of those before we foam the car down. Now you also notice too, the car is mostly dry at the moment. My preference is to do this while the process, while, while the, the, the car is still relatively dry, so that the foam has a, has a maximum chance to, to do its work and to cling onto the surface. Uh, and so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start from the top and we'll work our way down. It's probably worth pointing out if you don't have an IK foamer at home, you can spray the product directly onto the paint from the spray bottle. Um, some people even dilute it down 50% with water and it's still, still effective.
So, all right, so the next step of the process is uh, we're doing a, uh, the first round of foam. Um, so the reason why we do this is uh, just to start the process of, particularly on the lower panels, of, of getting some of the, 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 the chunkier bits off the car before we actually touch it with a mitt. So um, using uh, the, the foam is actually a very, very good way of being able to do that um, and, and letting the product do the work. Um, in terms of decontamination washing, what we've, what we've got here is a mixture of, of um, uh, car wash soap with some all-purpose cleaner. Um, and the all-purpose cleaner um, has the additional job of beginning to break down any waxes and sealants that are on the car because as part of the, the, the correction process, we don't want anything like that sitting on top of the car, uh, masking any scratches and swirls right. um, uh, that we you know, want to be correcting out. While the foam is doing the rest of the thing on its car, what we're going to do is we're going to go and focus on a few areas um, with the, the APC and the Boar's hairbrush, just to, just to agitate them, to, to clean them up, namely badges. Again, because this car's travelled from interstate, we'll do a bit more around the, the grills around the front, um, just to make sure that we loosen off any uh, old bugs and things like that. Now Dan's uh, doing a mitt wash using regular soap then? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, the main thing is to, for the decontamination side of it, you want to use something that's not going to leave anything behind. Uh, because the whole point of uh, decontamination wash is to keep the panels as uh, clean and, and free of additives as possible. It's also worth pointing out that Again, where this differs from a normal maintenance wash is that I'm using a single bucket in this instance. The reason being is that this decontamination wash is going to be followed by a fairly intensive paint correction process. So in the interests of uh, speed, um, I still will use a single bucket because anything light that might be put into the car will get taken care yeah, of during the that anyway, yeah. process. Now having said that, I still use grit guards and work in a very, very clean environment. So there is a very, very good chance that nothing will be put into the paint. So Dan's just foaming down the car again. <laughs> It. So lots of people have heard of clay bars, we've used clay bars before. Uh, we're going to use a clay towel today, so just come in here close and you'll see it's a polymerised rubber that's attached to a microfiber towel that is effectively the same kind of material as a clay bar, but much faster. So because it's a brand new towel, what we're going to do is we're going to use it on the glass first, just to break it in, because when these are manufactured they have some sharp little edges on them and using it on the glass helps just knock those little edges off so it minimizes the chance of damaging the paint. Taking the car down, he's blow drying and getting all the water out of the uh, panel gaps and through all the trim. Right, so that's the decontamination process finished, and I guess the next steps for the car will be taken into the the uh, into the detailing bay. Um, so what we'll do then is we'll uh, tape it up. Uh, inspect the paint and then uh, work out a strategy on how we're going to correct it. Alright, no worries. Well, thanks for your time, Dan. Much appreciated. Thanks, Joel. And you can follow Dan uh, to see the finished product from this car and others like it, Dan's Garage Detailing on Facebook and Instagram. That's right. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>